folks, welcome back. It's another scandalous episode of Whining About Pest Control. If you're just joining us, I am Shell Hartzer of 360 Pest Consulting. And not too long ago, I'm scanning through one of my pest control groups on social media, and I see some posts, you know, to the effect of, we're not the maid service, we're in pest control. Okay, I've talked about sanitation before, but let's delve into this some more from that aspect. To get into this topic and my scandalous opinions on it, I'm drinking Storyteller Merlot, and I've got the big glass, so buckle up. Not bad for a Merlot. There is a lot of research into limiting food resources and what effect that has on pest populations. The example I like to use is that right now, my wine rack is full. I have more than enough wine for me and all of my holiday guests that I've had over. Great, we're all happy because we get as much wine as we can drink. Now, what happens when I only have one bottle of wine? I guarantee some people are going to die because I am going to trample them on the way to that wine. Those of us who do get there, we don't get very much wine now. So we've expended a lot of energy fighting and getting to the wine, and now we have to spend even more time and energy to find more wine because we don't have enough wine. For insects and rodents, limiting their food means they grow slower. Some die from not having enough food. They also reproduce less, if at all. Part of a successful pest control program is removing the food, the water, the shelter. Food obviously being the biggest driver here. Before you start yelling at me, I know the pest control folks aren't responsible for every single sanitation issue. But let's whine about a couple things that I do routinely see when it comes to pest control and sanitation. First, using the Webster. Spiders like undisturbed areas. I want to drink in peace, so if somebody keeps disturbing me and taking my wine and my favorite chair and my fuzzy slippers, I'm going to go somewhere else. By knocking down as many of those spider webs as you can, you eliminate their hard work on their home. You start to drive away some of their prey. You may even kill a few spiders. Even better, you mess up their love life. Many of the web spinners have pheromones in their silk. This is typically to attract the male. So no web, no love, no spider babies. Knocking down webs is far more effective than any pesticide application you can do. So why not use that time that you may have sprayed to actually use the Webster and get rid of them? Fewer spiders, fewer callbacks. Second, using the vacuum. I know you are not the maid service, but when you walk into an infestation, physically removing as many of those insects as you can is a good thing. You're probably sucking up a bunch of their food source too, so it's a win-win situation. I've heard all the complaints. I don't want to have to carry another tool. It's too heavy. The customer's going to start to expect it every time. It takes too long. You know what takes even longer? The multiple callbacks you're going to have to endure. I'm not saying you have to vacuum up people's homes every time you go out to do a service, but you know those new customers with raging infestations, they're serious. And honestly, you can be inspecting the whole time that you're sucking up those little offenders. Yes, it's going to take a little longer than if you use the spray and pray method, but it's also going to take a, a lot longer when you have those unhappy customers who keep calling you back. Third, not documenting. Yep, we all know documentation sucks. Too bad, you have to do it. First of all, no matter what you tell the customer, they probably have 16 other things on their mind, and they're going to be lucky if they remember half of those. That's before the glass of wine. If you write it down, there's a record now. Customers can't say, but you never told me to trim those trees that the roof rats are using to get into my attic. There comes a point, too, when you may have to walk away from certain accounts. If they refuse to do their part, there's no partnership and the situation's not going to get better. Sanitation issues inside and outside have to be documented. Do it. It's going to cover your butt. Lastly, before I get down off my wine box, doing some sanitation at a customer's site sets you apart from those people who say, we're not your maid service. I was working with a large warehouse and we were doing a walkthrough with a, a bunch of their upper management. There's a few stray wrappers on the floor, some pallet splinters that as I walk by, I pick them up and I stick them in my pocket. When we're done, one of those higher ups looked at me and said, what are you doing with that stuff? And I said, I'm just removing it and I'm going to throw it away on my way out. He looked at me and said, this is our site and there's five of us and not one of us from that site picked up any trash on our walk around. Basically, it hit him that an outsider was taking better care of their site than they were. Think about it. 
Pest control is about the little things. Literally, we deal with small insects. Sanitation may seem like too big of a time suck or too much effort for too little results, but it is going to help solve whatever the problem is faster. Solving customers' problems faster, showing you care, gets you better reviews and more customers. So grab a glass, pick up your trash, pick up their trash, and whine to me about your sanitation issues. I can help you. Share, like, follow, love, all those buttons down there, whatever. You don't want to miss any of this great whining. Cheers to my scandalous opinions on sanitation and pest control. Mm -hmm.